as a surgeon, you become blind at some point. Surgeons think that because they're a surgeon, that they know everything. There's always space for learning all the time. It's very important to try to analyze the steps of the surgery. May I ask you how you felt with our case today, Dr. Raga? Well, it was a really uh, nice case. Um, I got to learn uh, very important tips that uh, not only add to the efficiency of the operation, but again, save a lot of time. And uh, I know that it's very critical in this kind of surgery uh, time, the time factor. The shorter, uh, as we were previously discussing, the shorter the time, uh, the less incidence of, of infection. So. Uh, have you done the penile implant by yourself before? Yes, many times. Uh, How many that. cases? I could do maybe around six to seven, maybe ten cases a month back in Egypt. Just yourself? Yeah, uh, all by myself. Where, where, where did you get the training before, all that before? Well, I'm uh, originally a lecturer of urology in the university, Venezuela University in Egypt. I got my training at Cairo University, my uh, master's degree in urology, then um, my doctor's degree in uh, urology in Cairo University, then I uh, went for a fellowship in the U.S. at the Cleveland Clinic for two years, oh. followed by one year at Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. So you have a long history of the training with the prosthetics yeah. in the head of this. Mm -hmm. May I ask you why you chose to come over here to get trained by uh, Dr. Osmanov? First of all, Dr. Osmanov is one of the best in Europe when I, when I researched, and there's always space for learning all the time. You want to get the, uh, especially from the experts in this, in this field, because you want your service, you want to always advance in your service. And uh, I was fortunate enough to win the uh, ESSM um, award, the uh, sponsorship for this fellowship. It's a three-month fellowship, and um, they gave me uh, five choices uh, across Europe, five uh, centers of excellence, and mm -hmm. uh, here at the UKSH was one of the top, my top priorities, and I was lucky to win it, mm. Dr. Osmo. So you were able to see today, uh, uh, Dr. Osmo and I myself have uh, mm. some years of experience with the penile implants, but obviously we have a master today, right? Dr. Right. Olson was with us. How do you feel? You know, like uh, uh, those two, you know. His sons are scolded by his father, well, <laughs> their father. We were just talking about that. I wish to be a, a third son from Egypt because, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, mm. uh, it's only been a week now and then a busy week full of interesting cases. And, and to top that, uh, this summit with, uh, I know, Professor Wilson's uh, the godfather of uh, mm. the whole implant world. So, I mean, uh, I'm on top of the world right now. Well, not only that, but, you know, today uh, we did the penile implant, which is a... Uh, 45 years it's been around and we did it through uh, an incision that has only been described 15 years ago uh, for putting an inflatable in. Uh, I think Egidio uh, in Brazil was the first guy to publish it in about 2004. But it didn't really catch fire until Dr. Park uh, learned how to do it and opened his clinic in Seoul and then has since done 600 through the scrotal, through the subcrotal incision. So by far and away the most of anybody in the world through that incision. And today, what did you feel uh, made it a, an attractive incision for you to use in Egypt? Actually, I think uh, I would adopt this incision uh, as soon as I'm back in Egypt because uh, there are a lot of advantages. Number one is that you avoid, completely avoid the hematoma because I know uh, whatever approach through the scrotum, because uh, of the nature of the tissues there, you get this large swelling and hematoma, you have to use the mummy wrap. Uh, the problem with the hematoma, it increases the, increases the rate of infection, number one. Number two, you delay uh, the time to cycle or uh, when you're, uh, the patient is able to use the pump. Uh, the other thing is that when you use the uh, subcoronal incision through the original uh, 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 circumcision incision, then, then cosmetically it's, it's not there anymore. So it's a beautiful incision. So all through your trainings and the many other things, what do you think the most important uh, in terms of the, to prevent the post-operative infection or post-operative complication? Let's say, what is, what's the most important thing you have to do during your surgery? 
Um, I think it starts maybe uh, maybe uh, before surgery. It's the proper uh, preparation of the patient, proper selection of the patient. Uh, if you have any septic foci, you have to take care of that. And then it has uh, to do with the um, operative theater, the setting, uh, your instruments. And then it has to do with the operator himself, his skill, his expertise, um, uh, the technique he uses. Uh, the approach, uh, the time of the operation, I think all of this affects the time of uh, operation from the beginning to the end, uh, as soon as you uh, open your incision and the closure, even the closure, uh, maybe the antibiotics used during the procedure, um, the way you handle the, um, the device itself, the implant itself. Afterwards, I know Dr. Wilson might not uh, approve of that, is the post-operative antibiotics, but we were just discussing that uh, they have no, that, that much of a role after afterwards. It's the perioperative uh, antibiotics. I think, yeah, that's that's the most important thing. As I highly value your efforting of the continued education because, uh, like you saw today, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Osmanov and I become used to our own ways of doing things. Like uh, we so become familiar with, it. we cannot recognize any faults or any you know downsides of the what we do. As a surgeon, you become blind at some point, right? So training like this, correct? Someone should tell you that you are doing something wrong. So that's what you can learn, or I can learn throughout the surgery. I think that was the most important thing today. You saw. That's what I believe. Because mm -hmm. uh, there will be a day that you become experienced surgeon, and you know that you are a good surgeon. But that's the time when you need a master surgeon to. Correct you. And I think, I'll like say. I said, there, there's <laughs> always areas of, of improvement. I mean, they, they will never stop to improve your, your procedure, your technique. Mm -hmm. It's a, such a joy to have uh, uh, all the surgeons doing the surgery together and while sharing their ideas and thoughts. Mm -hmm. They have all logics, but their logics is not always right. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I mean, surgeons think that because they're a surgeon that they know everything and so they add things to the procedure that have never been proven uh, to work and never been proven to decrease infection but when someone who has more experience watches that surgeon they say this guy is wasting a lot of time he's changing his gloves he's putting more sutures in than he needs to uh, many many things for example on a scrotal incision if, if you sew the incision, if, if it's a vertical incision like this, and you start at the top and you put in stitch, 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 you waste time. The correct way to do it is to put one stitch in the middle and then put a stitch halfway and a stitch halfway, and that's generally the whole closure. But if you start at the top and go like this, you put in more stitches. So you always have to be thinking of, of saving time and because not only is time money because you're spending the time in the OR, but the patient is paying for additional OR time, plus the amount of time that the incision is open is so important for decreasing infection. I'd like to uh, ask Dr. Osmanov, uh, who's never had a fellow before, have you? No. So how does it feel after one week to have this Boston Scientific Fellow? So I'm uh, very proud to have uh, Dr. Rajab in our team because he is, well, he is hungry to know and he always asks me and uh, observing uh, tricks during the surgery. Is this and the first year of the fellowship? This is the first year. First year, okay. And of course we are lucky to have such a great fellow yeah. with us. And I wish uh, um, a lot of success in his career and of course uh, be sure that all of us will support you in your uh, clinical life and you can always contact me or uh, Professor Park or Professor uh, Wilson if you have any question. And they're mostly important, but I think what I learned and I always learn something uh, having Dr. Wilson or Dr. Park in the hospital for somebody, for the experienced surgeon, uh, and I always ask me, well, I, I saw the surgery today and what are the most three things I've learned that's very important to try to analyze the steps of the surgery and I learned it from you father and, uh, <laughs> it's it's very important I always do it with the, with uh, my uh, 
the fellows are residents. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's always, when you're a teacher, you always step back and say, what's the most important thing you learned today? Uh, and, but you, and you only get two or three sentences to answer the question. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Father. Yeah. Not all students are as smart as our Dr. Rajab. You know, many students of yours are like us. We're very stupid, we're very, you know, <laughs> hard to teach, very stubborn and uh, those stuff. How were you able to manage all those teachings? Yeah, it's a funny deal. Some, guy, some guys, uh, bam, they have it immediately. Others take many visits. I mean, for example, there are several American uh, surgeons <laughs> probably took six sessions with me to get them to the point where they could do it in less than an hour. Oh. Uh, so some, it's a matter of training. And, and what I find, Sean, uh, today is that it's even more difficult with young doctors because of the laparoscopic and the robotic emphasis in their training. Many of them don't do very much uh, open surgery. These guys, they finish their training and they're a wizard at the robot, but in terms of making an incision and tying knots and getting exposure, they don't really know what to do. And mm. So it's even harder now, and that's why uh, fellowship training like uh, Ahmed is taking uh, is going to really pay off because we're going to have fewer guys do these tricky, mm. risky little mm. operations mm. in prosthetic urology. Mm.